I, I was able to order the right shirt that fits him very well. And I was the creepy friend who measured people on image J. But I guess that's what make PhD really cool. <laughs> Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. Today, I'd like to share with you another practical tip, my favorite software, ImageJ. This video is not meant to be a tutorial to help you to do step-by-step -step guide on using ImageJ, but I feel like there is an importance on highlighting the power of what you could do using this software. So I hope at the end of this video, you'll be able to name a few applications that is helpful using ImageJ. You'll be able to identify where are the resources out there. There are blogs, videos, and forums. I also like to cover my biggest discovery that is late in the recent years using ImageJ, the macro features on how you can automate and you can save a lot of time during image analysis. In the end, I will also share a script that I have learned by opening a folder or and batch process the same command on all the images universally. So it saved me a ton of time and I hope this will help you in saving some time for your holidays and weekends. ImageJ is a powerful tool for image analysis and in research there are so many applications that comes with image because we have figured out to measure sizes of animals from the site by putting a ruler next to them and you can calibrate the sizes and, and extract all this data from just image processes. So today I'd like to share with you about ImageJ. As its name suggests with a J, it's actually written with a Java-based language. Disclosure, <laughs> I'm born in the same year when the precursor of ImageJ was made, 1987. 10 years later, ImageJ was born in 1997. When I first used ImageJ, I had the first opportunity to work in a research project. At that time, a PhD student was studying the rocky shore ecology, and I have a tons of images from the desk that I have to count the number of barnacles on the rock. And that was my first scientific contribution, and I had done a lot of image analysis at that time. Fast forward to now, it's more than 10 years later, I still use ImageJ regularly in my research. And I'd like to cover a few applications of ImageJ in this video, and I hope this will inspire you to think about this open source free software that is powerful to analyze images. What you can learn from an image could be something like the size, the area, or even volume. If it is a stack of images, you can also understand the intensity of a protein band from a gel. That's also on image J. For those who do microscopy, you can also take out three images of different colors from your fluorescence image and overlay them and put them together using the image J features. So it's a great tool and you probably have seen a lot of this output from paper. It's a simple thing as even putting a scale bar on a figure is possible on ImageJ. It's such a lightweight, easy to use software and it has so powerful community all over the world that if you have a question, you can always find an answer from the internet. And that's the beauty about open source software. First, let's consider the basic question of what is an image? If you zoom in really, really high resolution, you will see little squares and they are pixels. Image are tables of cells, like an Excel spreadsheet, that are filled with numbers of intensity value, like a bucket of water. If it is full, it can be white. If it is empty, it can be black. And if it is a color picture, you will have a bucket for red, a bucket for green, and the other for blue. They call the RGB values. And combining these different levels of colored paint in that one pixel, it can give you different color. 
When you see the whole picture, you will be able to appreciate colored image. If you have a technical understanding of what is an image, it's just an X and Y dimension of many boxes. And the boxes are filled with paint that are high intensity or low intensity. And that's differences in the signals of the, of the image. Another piece of information people will get from images are numbers. So if you have many cells in the image, you might want to ask the question, how many are there? And you want to count just the nucleus that are stained in blue. One way to look at it is to count it by hand and using a counter. The other way is to automate it and use, a, use ImageJ to isolate the threshold that are specific to the nucleus and it counts how many objects that are passing that threshold values. Let me take you over to image J and show you what we can understand from an image. If you magnify an image to show where are the squares, where you can pixel, like where you find pixels, and place the cursor on the square, it shows the brightness value about how full this bucket is from 0 to 255. Mathematically, you can also replace every pixel with a number. And if it is a colored value, you can replace for three sets of filter using red, green, and blue. And this is the basic of all image data manipulation. If you have a microscopy image, it will already have a calibration in some software to tell you how many pixels is equal to how many micrometer. But in the real life, if you want to find out how long is my arm, I could stand next to a ruler and you can take a picture of me right now. And you can calculate the length of my arm based on knowing what is the length of this other ruler. In fact, I did use image J to buy a secret birthday present for a friend. I, I was able to order the right shirt that fits him very well. And I was the creepy friend who measure people on image J. Yes, but I guess that's what make PhD really cool. <laughs> As a picture like this, you magnified and you will see color different RGB value. But for most scientific data, it might just be enough to have a gray color information. They are usually in 8-bit depth. That means the bucket can be filled from 0 to 255, from 0 in black, 255 in white, and you'll be able to find out how strong is the gel signal of your protein or how bright is your immunofluorescence from the microscopy. So knowing this concept is helpful for you to understand what ImageJ does to your image in processing. And sometimes if you only want to isolate a certain feature, knowing um, which place is what value in the beginning by magnifying it on image J, placing your cursor on that pixel and it will tell you the gray value. And you can then set a threshold to be lower than the ones that are irrelevant to what, to what you want. And then you can do a measurement of size, di diameter, area from that image. So now you appreciate that an image is just an X, Y dimension of table. You then can realize you can use a three dimensional data stack by X, Y, Z data, and you can calculate volume because in a, in a Z stack image, it will tell you what is the height of the stack. And then you can calculate and calibrate the voxels height a pixel is two-dimensional, a voxel is three-dimensional. From that, you can calculate volume. And similarly, if you have a time-lapse image of how does this cell move over the time in a few hours, you can calculate the speed of this trajectory by knowing how frequently you are taking the photo. For example, this video you're watching right now has a frame rate of 25 frames per second. And with this calculated, 
I can take out each frame at a time and just measure the before and after displacement and divide it by the time that is known to have passed through all these frames. It's really mathematical and once you understand the basic, you can understand most of the image analysis out there. If you are starting with ImageJ, I highly recommend you download not just the ImageJ software, but the Fiji version of it. It's so-called Battery Included ImageJ. That means it comes with all the plugins that you might use and it's really handy. You don't, in the past, we need to download one plugin at a time and make sure it was placed in the right folder and make sure you run it with all the required plugin and it could be discouraging. So if you are just starting and you are exploring with the function of ImageJ, I highly recommend you download the Fiji version. One other plus of using ImageJ Fiji is it comes with a macro recorder. What does it mean? It is like when you click on macro recording, it will record all your clicking and it transforms that into programming's language, which is the code. They are in macro script, which was an alien language to me. But after some time, I realized I could edit numbers such as the threshold value, contrast and brightness, the number of image open, it become really handy to, uh, to manipulate just the script and click the run button instead of clicking all the five buttons over and over again. So I hope this is going to help you save time to do some shortcuts by saving your click that are always that five series of clicking. You can always save it as a macro script. I also discovered a little bit more about macro script by programming my first loop. And it, what it does is simply opening a folder full of files that are my measurement files that are the same type of photos. And I already decided what to do with those photos, like changing the brightness value and making a threshold. So what it does by one button, it will go through everything in that folder and export the image of the thresholded values. So it is saving me a lot of time instead of doing all of this thresholding myself. For those who might be interested in programming more in ImageJ, I highly recommend reading this and that's where I've learned to program my first batch opening script and asking it to export a very specific set of files to another output folder. It saved me a lot of time. I do know that ImageJ has a batch processing button, but I think it is more flexible when you can write your own script. So I hope this inspired you to think of a programming level of using ImageJ. So I hope this video is a good appetizer for you to get the interest of knowing more about ImageJ as well as knowing all the resources available for you like blogs, YouTube videos and forum discussion to optimize your skill set required for your research. Thank you for watching and if you learned something in this video, please make sure to share it with your friends and make sure you comment below and tell me what are something you would like to learn from me about ImageJ. Comment below if you already use ImageJ in your research. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thank you for watching and I will see you the next time.